2 d array or a two dimensional array is an array of arrays it can be thought of as a table or matrix with rows and columns in c a 2 d array is declared as follows data type array name row size column size let's back down each part of syntax data type this is the type of the data that the array will hold. In the example provided, the data type is int, meaning the array will store integers. Array name, this is the name given to the array. In the example, it's called a matrix. Row size, this specifies the number of rows in 2D array. In example, 3 indicates that the array has 3 rows. Column size, this specifies the number of columns in two dimensional array. In the example, four indicates that the array has four columns. So, in the provided example, the array is named a matrix. It is a type int. It has three rows and four columns. This creates a two dimensional array with three rows and four columns. And you can access the individual elements using indices like matrix i, j, where i is the row index and j is the column index. Here are some key points and operation related to the two dimensional array in C. The first one is initialization. Int matrix of 3, 4. Int. The data type of array. In this case, it's an array of integers. Matrix. The name of the array. 3 indicates that the array has 3 rows. 4 indicates that the each row has 4 columns. The equal sign is used for initialization. Now let us see the array initialization. The outermost curly braces indicate the initialization of two dimensional array. Each inner set of curly braces represents the row of the array. The comma separated values inside the each inner array set of braces represents the elements of that row. So the provided example initializes a 3 by 4 matrix as follows. Row 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. Row 2, 5, 6, 7, 8, row 3, 9, 10, 11, 12. This results in two dimensional array named matrix with the following values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. You can access individual elements using indices like matrix ij, where i is the row index and j is the column index. For example, matrix 1, 2 would give you the value 7. Accessing elements int value is equal to matrix of 1, 2. Matrix, this is the name of the two dimensional array declared earlier. 1. This is the index to access the second row of the matrix. Remember, array indices in C or C++ are zero based. So, 1 corresponds to the second row. 2. This is the index to access the third column of the second row. Again, indices are zero based. So, 2 corresponds to the third column int value equal to this declares a variable named value of type int to store the value obtained from the array putting it all together the line of the code is accessing the element in the second row and third column of the matrix array and assigning it to the variable value in the example matrix 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 the value at the second row that is index 1 and the third column that is index 2 is 7. Therefore, after this line of code executes, the variable value will be assigned to the value 7. Traversal Outer loop. This loop is responsible for iterating over the rows of the matrix. Int i is equal to 0 initializes the loop variable i to 0. The loop will continue as long as the i is less than 3. Increments i after each iteration. Inner loop. This loop is nested inside the outer loop and is responsible for iterating over the columns of each row. This initializes the loop variable j to 0. The loop will continue as long as j is less than 4. Increments j after each iteration. Inside the inner loop, this statement prints the value of the current element at the position i, j in the matrix. Percentage %d is the format specifier for an integer. Matrix ij is the value at the current position in the matrix. After inner loop completes for a particular row, this statement prints a new line character moving the cursor to the next line. So the combined effect of the nested loop is to iterate over each element of the 3 by 4 matrix and print it row by row with each row on a new line. This results in output similar to the original matrix. It is common pattern for iterating over elements in two dimensional array. Updating elements. Matrix is the name of the two dimensional array declared earlier. 
This is the index to access the second row of the matrix. Remember, array indices in the C or C++ are zero based. So one corresponds to the second row. This is the index to access the third column of the second row. Again, indices are zero based. So two corresponds to the third column. The equal sign is used for assignment. This is the value that is assigned to the element at the specified position in the matrix. Putting it all together, the line of code is updating the element in the second row and third column of the matrix array with the value 20. In the example matrix 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. After this line of code execute, the matrix becomes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 20, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So the element at the position 1, 2, that is second row, third column is now 20. Passing two dimensional arrays to functions. When passing a two dimensional array to function, you need to specify the number of the columns or the size of the inner array in the function parameter list. Function definition. This defines a function named print matrix that takes three parameters, the number of rows in the matrix, the number of columns in the matrix, a two-dimensional array with dimensional determined by the rows and columns. The function is declared to return wide, meaning it doesn't return any value, nested for loop inside the function. This is the nested for loop that iterates over each element of the two-dimensional array. The outer loop iterates over the rows. The inner loop iterates over the columns. This prints the value of the each element in the matrix. After printing each row, this is used to move to the next line. This line calls the print matrix function with the arguments 3, 4 and matrix. In this case, the matrix is assumed to be 3 by 4 array of the integers and the function will print its elements using the logic defined inside the function. Overall, the print matrix function is designed to print the elements of the two-dimensional array. In row by row format, in the provided example, it is called 3 by 4 matrix, named matrix. Dynamic allocation of two-dimensional array. If the size of the array is not known at the compile time, you can dynamically allocate memory for two-dimensional arrays using pointers. Declaration of the pointer to a two-dimensional array. Dynamic matrix is a pointer to a pointer which will be used to point to the dynamically allocated two-dimensional array. Initialization of rows and columns. Int rows equal to 3, int columns is equal to 4. Rows and columns store the dimensionals of the two-dimensional array. Dynamic memory allocation allocates memory for the array of int pointers. Rows using malloc is the size of the bytes needed to store the array of pointers. Allocation of each row. Inside a loop, memory is allocated for each row of the two-dimensional array. Dynamic matrix of i is assigned to the address of the memory block allocated for each row. Column size of int is the size in bytes needed to store the elements in each row. Now you have a dynamically allocated two-dimensional array stored in dynamic matrix. You can access and use it similarly to a regular two-dimensional array. Accessing and using dynamic matrix is similar to a regular two-dimensional array. Dynamic matrix 1, 2 is equal to 42. Assigning a value to the element in the second row and third column. Int value is equal to dynamic matrix 1, 2. Accessing the element in the second row and third column. Remember to free the allocated memory when you are done using it.